As with most 3D packages, Blender has the occasional tool that seems completely asinine to a new user. It mostly gets in the way, you just want it to be gone, and you don't know what to do with it. In this case, that tool is the 3D cursor. The 3D cursor is the black, red, and white crosshair type thing that you see here in the center of the screen. And it's also the thing that tends to get moved around the view at all different times. It's never where you want it to be. And it seems to just get in the way 99% of the time. Well, the 3D cursor is actually a very, very powerful tool that allows us to get very accurate transformations, placements, etc. First and foremost, the 3D cursor is positioned with the left mouse button by default. So just left clicking will position the 3D cursor. If you have changed your selection mouse over to the left mouse button, then you'll position your 3D cursor with the right mouse button. But assuming you're using the default settings, the left mouse will position your 3D cursor. And the 3D cursor can be placed anywhere in 3D view. Uh, it, is placed based on the depth of the active view. So if I rotate it around, anywhere I position the cursor will now be set at the current depth of the cursor based on this X, Y plane of my local view. And so this allows you to position the 3D cursor anywhere that you want, but this is not very precise. So there's a couple of different things that you can do to make this more precise. First off, if you open your properties panel by either pressing in or choosing the little plus sign right up here, you can go in and you can set the position of the 3D cursor from the 3D cursor menu right here. So you can set the exact location. So if we wanted to set this back to the origin, you could simply hit zero, zero, and zero. Okay, well that's all fine and dandy, but what is an actual case where we would use the 3D cursor? Well, one of the first things that we can use the 3D cursor for is positioning new objects. So any object that we add to the scene is going to be positioned at the location of the 3D cursor. So for example, if I just hit Shift A to bring up my add menu, and I just choose this monkey object, it will add it at the origin of our scene, which also, since we positioned the 3D cursor, is at 0, 0, 0. So it's at the position of the 3D cursor. Well, that's great, but if we position this, say, the 3D cursor over here and add in another monkey object, then you'll find that it's positioned it right there. So this allows us to position new objects wherever we want within the scene quite easily. However, let's say we've got this monkey object right here, and we now want to add a cylinder directly below it. Well, you know, we could just you know, reposition our 3D cursor at the center, add a new one, and let's just assume for a moment our 3D cursor is over here, but we want to add our column right in here. So, you know, there's multiple ways we could do it. We could just add it, it'll be added over here, and then we can move it over. Or we could snap the 3D cursor to our monkey because that's where we want to add the new object, and we can do this by hitting Shift S to bring up the snap menu, and we can see that we have several different options, including cursor to selected, cursor to center, cursor to grid, cursor to active. In this case, we're gonna choose cursor to selected, and the 3D cursor will immediately snap to that object. I could now just hit Shift A, add in, say, a cylinder, and it's now positioned exactly at that point, and I can then just move it down along the Z-axis, and I have a column sitting below my monkey head. All fine and dandy. Well, what's another use of the 3D cursor? Another thing that you can do with it is use it as a precision transform point. And what I mean by this is we can use it as the pivot point for any transformation that we want. And this is really helpful. For example, if you wanted to say rotate this column around and we wanted to say rotate it just 90 degrees up to here. Well, you know, that's all fine and dandy. We could just go ahead and rotate it around the Y axis by hitting R and then Y and 90 degrees and then just moving it up. Okay, but you know, we would like it to be more accurate than that. Well, the way that we do this is we go down here to the foot, footer, or actually it's the header of the 3D view, and change our pivot point over to the 3D cursor. As soon as we do that, you'll notice that the transform manipulator has now snapped to the current position of the 3D cursor. And if I now hit R to bring up my rotate, and then Y to ro lock around the Y axis, you'll notice it uses that 3D cursor position as the pivot point rather than the object origin. So this is really helpful for doing all kinds of transformations. This works for both rotating and scaling or scaling in any direction away from it. So very, very helpful for more customized precision transforms, particularly because we have the ability to snap the 3D cursor anywhere that we want. 
So that's the 3D cursor, and that's a couple of different uses of the 3D cursor. There's many more, uh, but I won't get into those yet. You know, I'll kind of introduce a few of those as we get along in this DVD. But the last thing that I wanted to point out is, you know, when you're adding objects, particularly if you're working on, say, an individual asset, most of the time you're going to want your assets centered at the scene origin, you know, just fairly standard workflow. Well, if our 3D cursor is always just getting positioned somewhere randomly in the scene and we go to add an object, we don't want it to be added over here. We want it to be added here in the center. So the way that you very quickly reposition the 3D cursor for doing exactly this is by pressing Shift-C. And Shift-C will recenter the 3D cursor at the origin and center the view on that such that then you can add any object exactly like you wish.